Good Friday morning, everybody. As you probably can tell, we're going to talk about head protection today. Uh, these are a couple helmets I just pulled out of some trucks here in Chambersburg. And then, of course, we have the uh, crane communication helmets, or just the communication helmets that we uh, put into service a few years back. But I want to take a moment and just discuss different types that I've been seeing around. Uh, pulled this one out of a truck. So, what do I look for when I look at a helmet? First thing, I'm going to make sure it's E-rated, which means it can be used around electricity. And as you can see, or as I can see, it should be clearly stated. Mm, somewhere in there. If you look real close, you can see it. It says class G and E. It's got to be E-rated. Uh, when you're working around electrical conductors. Now you're probably gonna uh, see some policy changes about that because we work around electricity so often, I think it's, uh, there's too much room for error if we continue to have guys have two helmets or have to switch out helmets you know, between electrical hazard jobs and non-electrical hazard jobs. We work around power too often to really differentiate that. Uh, but for the time being, I need to make sure your helmet's E-rated for working around lines. Uh, it needs to fit snug. If it has a chin strap, like your pencil helmet that you all should have at some point or somewhere, if it has a chin strap, chin strap should be on and buckled when it's on your head. Uh, if it doesn't have a chin strap, obviously you don't need a chin strap. That may change here in the near future. Uh, the helmets we give landscapers, this is the oldest one I found. It's actually an E-rated helmet. The newer helmets I give landscapers are not E-rated. They really don't need it. Uh, very rarely are they ever in a situation they actually need a helmet. So, and they shouldn't be doing any electrical hazard work. Uh, the cask helmets that we use for communication uh, during crane work, first of all, you could read into things and say, well, this is an E-rated helmet. You're correct, because it has vents. It, doesn't, it makes it uh, not an E-rated helmet. However, if you're doing a crane removal, you should be 10 feet away from power lines anyway. So, at this point in time, about the only people I can see uh, that are justified to wear a helmet that's not an E-class helmet is a Joey, because he works in a lightning rod, or as you know, the spider lift. And then anybody that does crane work and is wearing the communication helmets, uh, and they're doing crane work, they should be 10 feet away from wires anyway. But look for some policy changes on, on headwear, on helmets, because we're trying to keep things uniform and of course trying to keep everybody safe and in the clear as far as uh, regulations. But Ben Steffi here is going to talk real briefly on how to know when to retire your helmet. So we're talking about retiring a helmet. Um, a generally a good rule of thumb is about every five years, right? So all of these helmets have different, uh, I guess, dates you could say, and they're going to be in certain areas. So the old school helmet that Aaron had earlier, um, I don't know if you can see it real good, but right here it's got a date, and it looks like it was made in 2012, um, looks like August the 8th there. So I know that's really hard to see, but I know we got some of these floating around, so that's going to give it to you. And that one's going to go in the trash. If you got the uh, Johnny Cool Guy helmet, this one is super hard to tell, um, but the date is just like the other one there. It's got an arrow pointing to it. Uh, sometimes it'll go to the month and the year. Uh, this one looks like we can at least make it out that it was 2017 uh, at a minimum. Um, so that would go with this fella here, our Petzl. This one's pretty easy to see. And I don't know if the casks are like that. I know some of you guys got the really cool guy helmets with the Protos. Um, but those first two numbers there, that should have been 2014. Um, so this is Aaron's helmet, so he's out of regs. <laughs> but um, actually, the cast is here, so just give me a second. This has too much padding. Oh, this one actually has a plate on it. Um, and I assume that some of you guys could probably find one in yours right there, 10, uh, 2016, so October 2016. So along with the, 
with the dates, obviously, just to give you the roundabout and some things that will affect that, obviously, is your helmet being weathered. So whenever we talk about that, they always say about don't let it ride up on the dash, which we all do. Um, so try to get out of that that habit because obviously wear and tear happen a lot quicker. Um, so you're always checking the shell, making sure there's no cracks, um, defects. And then obviously you want to make sure that your suspension isn't damaged in any way, shape, or form. If it is, just junk it. Obviously Aaron can get you another one. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. Shell, suspension, inspection date.